In this video we're going to use Microsoft Excel to calculate the probability of X number of successes with this binomial probability and then we're going to approximate the probability using a normal distribution. So let's look at our Excel document. I am using an Excel document that I've created from before and you will, can click right in this area here to learn how to create this Excel document. It's based on binomial probabilities and so we're just going to use that information here and then we're going to adjust it a little bit. So the first question says for n51 probability 0.3 and x26 find the probability of x number of successes. So let's get that information in here. I have my value here for n so that would be 51. I have my success probability as 0.3 so I put those two in there and then the exact of 26, I can put that right here, and it will give me my exact probability, 0 0.0008, and that's exactly what it is. So no problem, I've already created this Excel document before, I just insert the information. This is showing the binomial probability of this, of this uh, random variable. Now we want to use the approximation over here though, so we want a normal approximation to it. So if I look down here, it first says, can I use a normal approximation? Well, I already have that installed here, right? It says n times p times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. And with my information in here, it calculates that already for me. 10.71, yes, we can use a normal approximation on this data. Okay, now let's go down here. This is the answer for the normal approximation. Notice it's, it's different than the one created with the binomial probability calculations. So let's use our normal approximation down here. Okay, I have a little table here set up. Basically I have a random variable for x1, x2, and then I'll be showing the areas to the left of them here, and then for I create one in between. The reason why I need to have uh, in between is for this fact here. When you're approximating a binomial probability with a normal approximation, for example, if we want exactly 26, I think it was a probability of 26, we want just this one bar from the, from the uh, binomial probability. So we want just this one. And when you find a, an abnormal approximation, it always finds an area to the left, right? It always finds an area to the left. So when we want an exact value of like 26, we have to find this one bar, which means that we have to add 0.5 units to our value, and then find that area to the left, like this. And then we have to subtract 0.5 from our value and find the area to the left here. We take this area and subtract this area off, and then we have that area of this one bar you'll notice that you'll have to do different things like if you want to find the probability less than a certain value you add 0.5 so you can get that little extra and then to the left. So what we need to do is go back to our example here and it says the probability of 26 so to approximate that we want 26.5 so on our right bound which is our bigger number is always the 26.5 is on the right and then we want 25.5 on the left. What this will do is give us half to the right and half to the left. X2 is always the one more to the right. Now let's find the areas of both of these. What we do is we just go into the formulas, more functions, statistical, and we're doing a normal approximation, so we're going down to normal. That would be the normal distribution one. We choose that, and then we gotta fill these values in the x random variable. Well, for the x1, that's right here. The mean. Luckily, I don't have to do any calculations, but if I did, this is what I would have to do. My dad, my worksheet already calculates that for me. It's right there. Standard deviation. This is the calculation you would have to do, but it calculates it for me right there. And then cumulative, yes, that gives me true all the way. And then I just hit OK. So that gives me the area to the left of this 25.5. Then I do the same thing here. Norm distribute. 
I choose the correct x value again, but it's this x value over here, the mean, standard deviation, cumulative, hit enter. So this is to the right of that one. And now to find just 26, I take this area and subtract that area. So this box will always be this one minus this one. And I'm to four decimal places, and there's my 0 .006. That was my normal approximation to the 0 .0008. Now I can use this for other calculations. Let's say I wanted to find less than or equal to 20. Well, I can't use 20, remember it. I'd have to use 20.5. And that would be an approximation to less than or equal to, to 20. And that would be a cumulative probability. So what we can do down here is go down here and look for the, the 20. So 0.944 is less than or equal to 20. And go to 20 on our thing, 0.941. So it's a little off, but that's our approximation to less than or equal to 20.